from WLWT, this is Issues. Hello everyone, I'm Curtis Fuller and welcome to Issues. Today we're going to talk about health on a couple of different levels. And we're going to begin by introducing you to the new health commissioner here in Cincinnati. Her name is Melba Moore. And uh, first of all, let's welcome you officially to Cincinnati. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've been here, you were telling me, seven weeks. Seven weeks. Originally from uh, St. Louis. Yes. Uh, 17 years as commissioner out there. Yes. Tell I was, me. It was an exciting time. Uh, in fact, the, and I shared this with my colleagues, that 9-11 public health changed. And on 9-11, I interviewed for the position of Commissioner of Health mm -hmm. in St. Louis. So in all of the chaos, what I've learned is you have to remain focused, be able to pivot, because that's what public health requires you to do, to pivot, to be looking upstream, what's going on, what's happening, and being prepared, really being prepared. And as you know, in any interview, you have to be prepared. You know, so uh, 17 years as commissioner, a lot of accomplishments. We were uh, received national accreditation February 26, 2018. So I'm really proud of that. Uh, but more importantly, proud of the team that I put together and that we were achieve, able to achieve national accreditation. And, and I tell you, the work that I do can only be done in partnership and collaboration. So that's what I bring to Cincinnati to continue the legacy because I'm standing on shoulders of many. And I'm just honored to have the opportunity to bring my expertise uh, to Cincinnati and to learn more to really learn more about how we can really close that gap of inequity uh, and, and see a change in improved health outcomes. And I say that for everyone. I look back because I, I want people to understand that that move from St. Louis, that was, that's home. And, Very and, much and so. so. And you were there uh, as the commissioner for, for 17 years. So this move to Cincinnati, it had to be a walk of faith in many ways. Uh, most definitely. Uh, when you talk to me about this, I literally think of a tree that was planted, very well rooted in the community, and I pull those roots up, and I came to Cincinnati on faith, courage, uh, wanting to, someone said yes to me, and I said yes, I will help in any way that I can. Similar cities in, in many Similar, ways. Similar, very much so. Uh, and, and issues, uh, really strangling cities, yes. mm -hmm. are, are similar across the board. Very much so. But I'm going to tell you, we can be better. We are better together. You know, the first thing when I came to Cincinnati, I was, I did a secret shopper, what I call is a secret shopper, undercover boss. <laughs> and for the most part, people were very, very pleasant. And what I do, and I said this before, I am not here to destroy anything. I'm here to build upon, to create more opportunities for other people, to create more partnerships, to work together so that we can be better together because no one survives isolated in a silo. Obviously, seven, seven weeks, you're still getting to know the community. Yes. And so when I, when I ask this question, it, it is somewhat cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. but, but, I, but I know that you're, you're already focusing in on some areas. So when I ask the question, what would be your top priorities of focus? Mm -hmm. I, I know this is somewhat premature because sure. you're still gathering sure. information. But from that perspective. Being here, educational awareness who we are, who I am, what we do, how we do, and that we want to bring in more people into our space. You know, we have health centers. We have 13 school-based health centers. That's phenomenal. We have our community-based health centers, and that's where you receive health services. So we're there entrenched in the community. Now, we can't be all over in every single community, but we're placed where it hopefully will be easier access for people to access our services. So what I've seen so far, educational awareness, who we are, what we do. And then to talk about some of the issues that are prevalent here that are similar in St. Louis, always keep your eye 
on infant mortality because you want to improve birth outcomes. I met with a partner and she said, just imagine us sitting here talking five years from now and talking about what we've achieved and what we've accomplished. That's what gets me excited. That, and that's that embracement that I'm talking about, people coming to you and saying, just imagine that. So that was my task and my charge in a meeting that I had with the community. Uh, it was a reception that imagine the possibilities of reducing infant mortality. Imagine the possibilities of increasing employment for individuals 16 to 34 to 46 years of age. Just imagine that possibility. And imagine the possibility of increasing, reducing the number of uh, cardiovascular disease and diabetes. Imagine what the city would look like. Imagine a city where the trees are real green and there's walking communities where people can walk and they're sharing. Just imagine the vibrancy of that. That's what I get excited about and the possibility of working in partnership with that. And just imagine working, you know, I've adopted a school and uh, I want to say thank you to Laura Mitchell for giving me permission. And that's the other thing, asking permission to be a partner as opposed to imposing on people. Because in order to do this, to change this narrative, it's taking all of us working together and it's encouraging, empowering our community. Because people have to believe in this vision yes. because the reality is any vision um, is going to cost dollars and cents and yes. uh, that will, will, you'll need that, that yes. community support yes. to, to fuel any of these ideas. And you have to leverage those dollars. You leverage the partnerships, your non-traditional partners and your traditional partners. You look at development and developers. There's, there's some leveraging that can be done there. So it's important that we sit back, assess, that's what you do in public health, assess, and think about who's at the table, more importantly, who's not at the table, and that we're empowering our families to know that you can change this and together we are going to do this. Let me take a break and then we'll get, I'll ask you a couple of specifics about, uh, you know, areas of concern, be it drug abuse mm -hmm. and, and mental health and things of that nature. So mm -hmm. we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Sure. Welcome back, everyone. I am actually introducing you to Cincinnati's new health commissioner. Her name is Melba Moore. Um, long time in St. Louis, but uh, Cincinnati can claim her now. Uh, we, we were talking about uh, uh, some of your vision. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of specific areas, obviously so much attention has been focused on drug abuse. Yes. And, uh, so how do we attack that uh, from a public health uh, mm -hmm. perspective? You, you, first of all, define the problem. Public health defines the problem, right? And we work with others to come up with an evidence-based practice model because you have attached to that performance metrics. What are you going to do? At what rate are you going to do that? But then you also look at the data. Where? And then the courage in talking about it. You know, there's a way in which you introduce things and you, you, you get a flow going with it. And then think about in terms of, we have a health center, we have several, seven health centers, but I'm thinking about one in particular area, but I'm still doing my assessment, to think about having, getting in the space of medication assisted treatment, MAT. Now we have a lot of partners out there that are already in that space. So now this is not to threaten that, but it's to link with that. So then strategizing around that, what would that flow look like in that area? If the data is telling me the cases are in that area, perfect. You know, I talk about going upstream. So what's really going on is that people are being traumatized or have been traumatized over the course of their lifespan. And if they are, and they need behavioral health services. But you have to be careful in talking about behavioral health services because we don't want people to think there's something wrong with you. It's not what's wrong with you. 
is what I wonder what happened. What happened and how can we address that issue? And how can we together work together? But we have to raise the awareness around that so that we get individuals engaged when we do that assessment. Hi, Mr. Fuller, how are you <laughs> when you come in? And not be abrasive. Tone matters. Eye contact, using your name, but asking permission. Can I use, do you prefer me call you by your first name or your last name? So these are all kind of strategies of engagement and getting people in and, and the talking about in a space where they feel safe and comfortable and won't feel like they will be criminalized, that kind of thing. So when I think about that, I think of a trauma-informed workforce, clinical staff and non-clinical staff, being prepared, mental health first aid, so when somebody comes into a health department, they're, they're already coming with possibly a burden of anxiety. So what we want to do is we recognize that. So our tone, our embrace of them should be warm and welcoming to de-escalate what they're possibly sensing and feeling. You know, I always think about traffic. You're trying to find a parking space. The anxiety of looking for a parking space, trying to run to that meeting or get in that, you know, get in that office at a particular time. So we need to be aware of that, cognizant of that, so that when they come in, it's okay. We're here to serve. I, another area um, that's had a lot of focus is violence yes. and how that is a health issue, mm -hmm. not just, uh, you know, we, we think of it just as crime, but it's, mm -hmm. it's health-related. It, will you see some yes. make that? It is a health issue, but the Prevention Institute out of California put together a beautiful pictogram, and law enforcement was there, public health, university, school system, every single partner, the judicial system, all were in this green space, working together, being connected. Because you have to understand, remember when I talked about trauma, each and every time a child is exposed to a traumatic event that moves them, their trajectory is moving towards juvenile delinquency. So we need to step back and say, what's going on in that family? What do they need? That's that health assessment. There's a role for public health to play in this space. And I think it's important that we talk through this and not talk it to death. Mm -hmm. Do the assessment. Strategize on the strategies and the solutions to resolve some of this. And I said several months ago, the core, the single most important area that where we can begin is what this city is talking about, mm -hmm. reducing poverty. Address the poverty. Pull me up out of that. Teach me how to come out of that. Have opportunities available for me. Have services ready for me because it's all about health. If I'm not healthy, the possibilities of achieving wealth are diminished. It is all about health. It's, it's unfortunate that, we, that that's still a priority 50 years after Dr. King made it. A priority. Um, uh, and finally, bef before I let you, uh, obesity, we, we don't talk as much about that, but that's still a, a, a major health issue. Yes. Small changes. So ob obesity will be another area. Infant mortality, obesity, um, behavioral health, the whole epidemic around heroin and opioids are going to be some strategies and that we take a look at, issues that we take a look at. But yes, obesity and engaging people to deliver that message. I'm asking now anyone uh, in your arena, in uh, my government arena, to serve as spokespersons because that humanizes it a little bit. Uh, so we talk about it in, and I like the soft approach uh, in talking about issues and strategies. I, I think you're going to have the First Ladies of Health initiative on next. And what a wonderful partnership. And talking about the things that they do, immunizations, but going to the clergy and engaging the clergy. So um, through that educational awareness that I talked about. Uh, I'm looking at the, the development of PSAs mm -hmm. to talk about some of these issues and then not just to talk about the what, but to unsilence us all to talk about it. Take the tape off your mouth and say no longer will we be silent about this issue. Together we can and together we will Cincinnati save lives. Very good. Well, welcome to Cincinnati. Thank you. Uh, you're always welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Hopefully we'll have you back soon. Thank you. We'll be back in a moment.
Welcome back, everyone. Uh, today, the focus is on health, and we're going to talk about something that's, uh, I think, f four years now? Is this mm -hmm. the fourth year? It is called First Ladies Health Day that's coming up uh, October 14th, but it's actually underway right now. And here with me is Dina Cranley and uh, Barbara Lynch. And first of all, it's good to see both of you. It's great to see again. you. Uh, as, as we've said this before, and I've said this before, I can remember the genesis of this. And when we say four years, that's, that's fantastic. Just in case someone doesn't know, in a nutshell, what is uh, First Lady's Health Day? Well, it's, it's a, a, a community family health day, and we offer a free health screenings and information on the second Sunday in October. And what makes it unique is that we're not at one location, but this year we'll be at 13 locations across the city. So um, we're really excited about it. Four years, I can't believe our fourth <laughs> annual. Um, it's been wonderful. We have collaborated with the churches in our community, with the Cincinnati Recreation Commission, as well as Santa Maria Community Services joined in this year and Seven Hills Neighborhood Houses. So it's a real, you know, along with 50 healthcare partners, it's a real kind of, you know, one message, one, one voice, one message, um, you know, ideology. And, and Mr. Lynch, uh, the health commissioner uh, acknowledged how that collaboration is so key in reaching out to the churches and, and it's proven successful with this project. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very successful and it, it helps us to reach pockets of disparity and in, uh, in health care that ordinarily would not be reached. And churches are, are still vibrant parts of the community, so people trust the church. Yeah. So it helps us to get in the community, bring them in, and, and educate them as well as give them screenings. And by taking it to the church, it makes it more comfortable for, for right. those. And it's not at every church, but people can feel more comfortable That's than right. going into what they might perceive as a, yeah. you know the the yeah. uh, a scary yeah, it's a uh, doctor's office. atmosphere yeah, exactly yes. mm -hmm. and yeah. and the healthcare professionals also like it they like getting out into the community meeting the people on their playground mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. it's a it's a great way to build connections you know we have 50 healthcare partners they're going into the community they're meeting people in the community and it's just a great way of building connections and Building that kind of trusting relationship where people may feel nowadays that they don't trust their doctor or they have a mistrust of the medical you know, establishment, this is a really great way to start breaking that uh, barrier. What's exciting, and I remember last year you talking about outcomes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, year one, it's an idea. We hope. <laughs> <laughs> we hope this, we hope that. Yeah. Now you're able to say, yes. uh, this is what has happened. So mm -hmm. give me some, some of the you know, success stories. We have partnered up with Ignite Partnership that has what's called an electronic passport. And so every participant who enters uh, or gets screened uh, is given a QR code. And so the QR code is scanned at every station and their results are printed out or given to them via either text messaging or email. But what's great about it, it's an anon anonymous data, but it helps us look at um, what are the prevalent issues by churches, by neighborhoods, by zip codes, so that the churches and our community partners can provide um, health programs throughout the year. Mm, wow. Give me some reaction from um, folks at New, Jer New Jerusalem. Because it is, New Jerusalem, is that one of the sites? It is, yeah. yes. Tell, yes. Tell me uh, how, how receptive they've been. They've been very receptive. We've had occasions where people or pre-diabetic um, who, who were hypertensive didn't know it until we brought the healthcare professionals in to do the screenings for them. At one of the churches, one of the ladies' uh, but, um, blood sugar was so high, mm. they had to call the paramedics to take her to the hospital mm. right away. So we, I think we've had a really good impact. I've had a, a young man who was in his 30s, healthy, great looking guy. Um, when he came out, he hugged me and he said, I'm so glad you brought them here because I d discovered that I am pre-diabetic and I am hypertensive. Even though I look good, I'm, I'm not well. Yeah. And, and that's important to mention that even though it's first ladies, it's, it's for everyone. It's, for, it's family. And, and Kids. It's, it's family. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's actually a, a pastor, and I, I won't mention his name, but he got his prostate screening last year and he was diagnosed with prostate mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's you know... 
Um, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to go to one place and get all your screenings done at one time. And so. And, and, and all of this is free? Yes. Uh, and I, <laughs> I mean, that can't be understood. Because <laughs> I looked at my bill <laughs> the last time I went to the hospital uh, just for a checkup. <laughs> So it's all free, and, yes, and people should take advantage free. of that. They should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they should. And not, not only are the screenings free, but we offer all other kinds of things. There's a, a senior corner for seniors, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. where you can find out if your balance is off, and if you're vi there's a vision corner where you can find out if you if you're really seeing what you think you're seeing. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we offer a lot, and there's uh, for the kids. There's a whole corner for the kids, face painting and balloons and all kinds of things. So we make yeah. it fun as mm -hmm. well yeah. as give you screenings. And, and, and is there follow-up throughout the year? I think I remember you telling me that you do check back in with folks, right? Yeah, we actually piloted uh, where we provided follow-up calls on a quarterly basis. Mm -hmm. You know, because we are a faith-based volunteer initiative, it's hard to staff volunteers yeah. to do, but it was very successful. I mean, people really, you know, at the end of the day, people want to feel like the other people care. And I think when you called and you said, hey, how are you doing? You know, you know, how many cigarettes are you smoking today? <laughs> because they want to quit smoking. And so it was, they loved the support. The feedback was wonderful. We would love to continue with this, but we definitely need more resources. But we had a great, great feedback. Yeah. October 14th is, yes. th is the day that it, it blankets the city, but again, it's been going on. Is there a number briefly that they, they can call? Yes, to? for information, they can call 352-3250, or they can visit familyhealthday.org for more information. Oh, perfect. All right. It's a great project. We'll be back in a moment. Before we go, my thanks again to the Health Commissioner, Melba Moore. You'll be hearing a lot from her in the, in the coming weeks, no doubt. And again, uh, for the First Lady's Health Day, the number you can call, 352-3250, 352-3250, uh, or go to familyhealthday.org. Uh, they're going to have a lot of giveaways. Again, the date is October 14th. Uh, it's going to be a great event as usual. That's all our time today. Have a nice day, everyone.